This is Apollo Control, Houston, 85 hours, 21 minutes into the flight. A little more than 20 minutes since we've been in touch with Apollo 8. We should reacquire in about 18 minutes. To recap a bit, the crew was given a few hours extra rest, particularly Jim Lovell, um, on the 7th rev. Bill Anders presumably is also getting some nap time prior to the trans-Earth burn a little later tonight. One or two things might be pointed up from today's revolutions around the Earth. We've noted the uh, temperature excursions that have occurred. They weren't entirely uh, unpredicted, but the, uh, the variance interested people here on the consoles excursions over a 50 degree range. Another point that's uh, proving interesting here with the passage of each rev is the fact that our apogee tends to grow ever so slightly and our perigee tends to shrink. This has not been the experience in Earth orbital flight. The apogee tends to shrink ever so slightly and the perigee usually remains stable coming down somewhat, but it, uh, the Earth orbital experience is explained by the ever so slight amount of drag exercised on spacecraft at perigee, which tends to pull down the apogee to slow the spacecraft somewhat at perigee, and uh, the effect of it comes in at the high point of the orbit and tends to drop it down somewhat. Somewhat the opposite effect seems to be taking place uh, in these revolutions around the moon. We have plots here on the first rev of 60.5 miles for apogee versus 60.9 perigee. And the next rev, 60.4 apogee versus 61.7 perigee. Then a 62 versus 60.1 a 62.3 apogee versus a 59.8 and the curve continues in that way. It's, a, it's slight but it's interesting and it does not conform to the Earth orbital experience. And again another reason for wanting to fly this uh, navigational hyphen operational Apollo 8 mission. At 85 hours 24 minutes into the flight this is Apollo Control of Houston. Apollo Control, Houston here. 85 hours, 39 minutes, and we're very, very nearly at the acquisition point. Only uh, 10 seconds away. And we should, if we're on plan, move right into a television transmission. Time of uh, 85 hours, 40 minutes has been passed to the crew. And the prime site for this picture will be the Goldstone Station from California. We're getting telemetry now via Honeysuckle Creek, the dish in uh, Australia. And no word yet on Goldstone. since uh, we've been acquired, we did acquire spacecraft, rather noisy data. But data on the ninth revolution around the moon. 
with an apogee of 63 miles and a perigee of 58.9 miles. Velocity of 5,352 feet per second. Loud and clear, an initial look at your systems are good. We've, we've got a picture, uh, of got a picture here. Uh, Roger, we've, got we've got a voice to go with it. Roger, Bill Anders. Theorizing here at that bright spot in the top left center of your picture is the Earth. Houston, it's not very clear. Take it below the lunar horizon. We're going to uh, follow a track that is going to Houston, uh, we're not receiving a picture now, are we? are now uh, coming on to Spice Sea, a, a small mare region covered with uh, a dark uh, level material. There is a fresh, bright impact crater uh, on the edge towards us. 
and a mountain range on the other side. These mountains are the Pyrenees. Apollo 8, uh, we are not receiving modulation on the signal. We have to have sync. Are you reading us, Apollo Houston? Apollo 8, we're reading you loud and clear, but no picture. We have no modulation. Roger, we understand. Take a look now. How about now, uh, Apollo? Loud and clear. Good picture. What you're saying is we cross by sea, or the craters Castor and Gilbert. And uh, what we've noticed especially that you cannot see from the Earth are the small, bright impact craters that dominate the lunar surface. Picture is loud and clear, and the picture looks real fine.
very bright features you see are the new impact craters, and the uh, longer a crater has been on the surface of the moon, while the more mottled and subdued it becomes. Some of the Uh, we've apparently lost your voice. The picture is still good. Roger. Uh, Houston, uh, oh, we're passing over an area that's just to the uh, oh, east of uh, Spice Sea now in checking our charts. Spice Sea is coming up in a few minutes. All right. If you go to Puna, accept why well, we'll uh, flank some information. approaching a uh, series of small impact craters. There uh, is a dark area between us and them, which uh, could possibly be a old lava flow. We estimate it's about 325 miles to the horizon, just to help your reference. The intensity of the sun's reflection in this area uh, makes it uh, difficult for us to distinguish uh, uh, the features we see on the surface, and I suppose even higher on the television, but as we approach the Terminator, and the uh, shadows become longer, you'll see a uh, marked change. There's a very dark crater uh, in the filling material of this valley in front of us now rather unusual in that it's uh, sharply defined, uh, yet it's uh, dark all over its uh, interior walls, whereas most uh, new-looking craters are uh, very bright interior.
facing north from our track, we are going sideways to our left. Uh, we believe the crater, the large uh, dark crater between uh, the spacecraft and the Sea of Crises is the uh, Condorcet Crater. Sea of Crises is amazingly smooth uh, as far as the horizon past this uh, rather rough mountainous region in front of the spacecraft. through the computer if you go back to block and it looks like we're getting a lot of reflection off your window now. Apollo 8, can you tell us uh, which window you're looking out? And uh, there's a large crater that looks like it's sticking up in uh, the upper right-hand corner of our picture. Do you identify that one? Relatively new. 
This is the uh, Sea of Fertility, and we're coming up on a large uh, crater, the Delta Rim variety. Has a strange uh, circular crack pattern around the middle of it. This is phenomenal. There's an interesting uh, rill directly in front of the uh, spacecraft now. Uh, running along the edge of a uh, small mountain. Uh, rather sinuous shape with uh, right angle turns. Like stand up. Right here is a series of uh, cracks or faults across the uh, the middle of the Mari. Uh, they drop down in about three steps uh, to the south. The uh, parallel fault pattern to the north has a drop down in the center.
And God called the firm in heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. <laughs> and God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth. This is Apollo Control Houston. The speakers in the order that they read from uh, what we believe to be chapters from Genesis were Bill Anders and Jim Lovell and close out with Frank Borman. I think that's both a biblical and a geological lesson that none of us will forget. At 86 hours and nine minutes into the flight, this is Apollo Control Houston. Clear Apollo 8, and thank you for a very good show. We have a maneuver pad for you when you're ready to copy. Houston, Apollo 8. Apollo 8, read you loud and clear. Roger, uh, uh, are we off the air now? That's affirmative, Apollo 8, you are. Did you read everything that we had to say there? Loud and clear. Thank you for a real good show. Okay. Now, uh, Ken, we'd like to get all squared away for TEI here. Can you uh, give us some good words like you promised? Yes, sir. I have a maneuver pad. Uh, I think we'd like to start by dumping the tape. If we could have that, I have your TEI-10 maneuver pad, and then we'll run through a systems brief.
four eight minus one six five zero zero one two niner niner five three six three zero zero one four six five zero zero five primary star Sirius secondary Rigel one two niner one five five zero one zero four quads fifteen second knowledge horizon on the two point nine window line at T minus three use high speed procedure with minus Mike Alpha over Apollo Control, Houston, at 86 hours, 18 minutes into the flight. Just a word or two on where the crew is uh, looking there, particularly they identified the track extremely well as they moved along. But uh, some of the areas were not so well identified because of the, uh, the reading which concluded their pass. The uh, reading came while they were moving across tranquility in a generally a westerly direction. The look angle was to the northwest into a series of uh, mountains rimming the northwest edge of the Sea of Tranquility. Earlier we uh, you recall they pointed out the Sea of Crises including the Picard craters. And uh, Immediately after we lost uh, the picture lock, we uh, went back to work with this update on uh, follow eight, it? with this tape. Hi, Roger. I'm reading you with a lot of background now. Uh, do you read me clearly? Okay, I'm going to give you a, a quick summary of the system. Basically, all systems are good. 
in uh, respect to your return trajectory, we can still get to the mid-Pacific line at 146 hours by waiting as late as the 13th rev. After 138 seconds of the burn, you're on your way home. Come on. The weather in the recovery area looks good. Apollo 8, did you call? Apollo 8, Houston, uh, could we have the high gain for a little bit longer? We broke scan on it, I can't... All right, you're coming in loud and clear now. Uh, did you copy my trajectory information? No, we're on Omni P, though. All right, that's fine. Say again, please. Go ahead. We uh, 130. Will you say it again, please? Welcome. Apollo 8, uh, first, uh, if you can spare, we'd like to have the high gain to complete the dump. Try to give them for you. Roger. In a couple of minutes, uh, Houston. All right, thank you. Okay, Apollo 8, while we're... Apollo 8, uh, while we're waiting for the high gain, I'll continue the trajectory summary. Uh, we can still get back to the mid-Pacific line in 146 hours from the 13th rev. And you're on your way after 138 seconds of the burn. Uh, that's 138 seconds gets you clear of the butterfly region. We recommend uh, not trying reignitions or restarts after 20 seconds. If you go beyond 20 seconds, this may get the trajectory beyond the correction, RCS correction capability to the free return. The weather and recovery area is good. We have an AOS following TEI of 8.9 plus 2.8 plus 3.9, and an AOS without TEI of 8-9 plus 3-7 plus 2-4. During the burn, you may notice a slight change in chamber pressure and tank pressures due to the fuel exhaustion in the storage tank and going to the sump tank. This may occur somewhere around two to five seconds into the burn. It'll be a small change in pressures in both systems. Going down the systems, all systems are go. In ECS, we want to stop water boiling after TEI for trajectory purposes. Your water dump situation looks good. You should be good to greater than 105 hours. We'll try to hold off the water dump until after MCC5. In the EPS, We'd like to stir the cryos prior to TLI, or correction, TEI. The next purge on the fuel cells will occur at approximately 92 hours. That will be both hydrogen and oxygen. Your battery status, battery A, 34.9, battery B, 39.1, and Charlie, 38.5. We have single tank cryo capability. SPS, looking at the performance on the previous burns, you can anticipate a normal burn taking approximately 3.7 seconds in excess of the computed values. Engine performance looks nominal, and all parameters have been steady. 
RTS looks good. All four quads, according to the computer program, have approximately the same capacity. You have a good rest map. I'll take you through TEI. We'll have a post-TEI PTC attitude for you in a few minutes. And that just about wraps up what we have on system. Over. Roger, thank you, Houston. Uh, we appreciate the uh, summary. We're trying to get high gain. All right. I think we have it. And you have the high gain. Now, Ken, as I understand it, if it shuts down after 20 seconds of burn, you don't want us to try to relight it? Is that what you said? Stand by. Apollo 8, the intent was do not delay ignition beyond 20 seconds. Over. Oh, do not delay ignition beyond 20 seconds. Roger. That's firm. And you want me to start it on bank A and then switch to B again like we did on uh, LOI, right? That's affirmative. Okay. Did you put in this pad for us? Uh, should uh, P30 and 40 be in our uh, uh, computer now? Follow 8, that's negative. We have not uplinked this pad. We'll put this one in on the next pass. Okay. Roger. This is Apollo Control at 86 hours, 33 minutes. A part of the information passed up to the crew during that last series of conversations uh, was the information they will use for their trans-Earth injection maneuver. Uh, this is preliminary information, and we do anticipate that it will be updated uh, probably on the next revolution. Uh, these figures, uh, as they were read up to the crew, are as follows. The time of ignition is 89 hours, 19 minutes, and 16 seconds. The burn duration will be 3 minutes, 17.8 seconds. And that will give us a nominal change in velocity of 3,522.3 feet per second. And uh, the maneuver will occur at uh, 100... 74 degrees east uh, Roger, longitude uh, and 9 degrees 17 minutes south latitude over the moon. This would give us a nominal return time to Earth of 146 hours uh, 49 seconds. And uh, we do anticipate to update this burn information uh, prior to the maneuver. At 86 hours, 34 minutes into the flight, this is Apollo Control. Apollo 8 Houston, we've completed the tape dump and the recorder is yours.
follow eight Houston or five minutes to LOS. We'll have AOS honeysuckle at eight seven three eight four two. This is Apollo Control at uh, 86 hours, 48 minutes into the flight. At the present time, we have just about five minutes before loss of signal. And uh, we've had about a minute and a half of uh, conversation with the crew since our last report. We'll play that back for you and then uh, stand by for any parting conversations from the crew before they go over the lunar horizon on this revolution. This is Apollo Control. Uh, I'd like to clarify uh, one aspect of the figures we gave you concerning that trans-Earth injection maneuver. Uh, the return time that uh, was listed uh, ground a last time of 146 hours, 49 minutes, 37 seconds uh, was the time at which the spacecraft would nominally reach 400,000 feet altitude uh, the splash time would be about 14 minutes, 10 seconds beyond that. And uh, these numbers, of course, uh, will be updated uh, both prior to the trans-Earth injection maneuver and also uh, en route back to Earth. So we would expect some uh, change in those, some update. We're now uh, less than two minutes uh, from loss of signal. Uh, we'll pick up the spacecraft again at a ground elapsed time of 87 hours, 38 minutes, 42 seconds. At 86 hours, 50 minutes, this is Apollo Control. Apollo 8, everything looks good going over the hill. Roger, Ken. Thanks a lot. Uh, we'll see you around the next pass. We'll just have our TEI uh, update for us ready early, okay? All oh, right. This is Apollo Control at 86 hours, 54 minutes. As the spacecraft went uh, over the horizon and uh, we lost uh, signal, uh, capsule communicator Ken Mattingly uh, passed up to the crew a, uh, an all systems go report. Uh, we'll play that back for you now. And we expect to reacquire Apollo 8 uh, in 43 minutes, 52 seconds. This is Apollo Control at 86 hours, 55 minutes into the flight. <laughs> 